please bring all your class one breeding goats to the show ring. All your class one breeding goats to the show ring.
Well, good evening. It's great to be back with everybody this evening. Uh, really look forward to a really uh, good goat show and working with the kiddos out here that are exhibiting goats this evening. Uh, the doe that starts this class is one that just really hits me hard as soon as she comes in the ring in terms of her skeletal build, her design. Just so athletic, so good looking when she gets set in motion. The young man gets her propped up. She's just really good build, really dynamic from the side. You get on the top side of her, there's plenty of mass and dimension up high there. One that's just awful fault free, a really, really good uh, a doe to start this class out with. Hits me pretty hard. The black shoulder goat one, that uh, you study her from the ground up. She's big boned, she's big footed one that's opened up. She's got some mass and got some dimension up there, up high. One for me today when you're comparing her to our class winner. She gets a little shorter and steeper out of her hip. She gets a little more common there in the upper one third of her body. It just doesn't quite balance up. But in terms of stoutness and power, she matches up with our class winner. Here's a doe in three that uh, there's not a whole lot of wrong with her. She's a good one. All three of them are really, really good. It is a very competitive class. Yeah, there's some shape up high on her. I uh, really like how creasy she is down her top line. For me today, she just doesn't quite have the design and makeup of the one in, in the two in front of her. She gets a little shorter and steeper out of her hip. She doesn't handle her back legs quite as well as the two above. Her too, we want to open her up in her center rib cage there and round her body up just a little bit to help balance her out. A really good class. Let's give these kiddos a round of applause for a job well done. Thank you. First place went to Creed Hughes, Country Clovers. Second place went to Aspen Hughes, Country Clovers. And third went to Jack Jerva, Country Clovers. Well, we're getting our older doe class here, and I think the young lady's doe is one that uh, just is a little more feminine up for one third of her body, gives you a little better look from the side, looks more like a show goat for me, one that's a little more level or down her top line, level or out of her hip. We get them ass set in motion. I think he handles her hind legs just a notch better. Uh, one that you surely want to open her up in her center body there, give her a little bit more body and dimension maybe there in her center portion there of a rib cage, but one that I think gives you a really good look from the side, a really feminine neat there in the upper one third of her body. 
Here's a goat there in second. Might be a notch uh, more opened up, maybe a little bolder in her center rib there. Got a little bit more body and, and flank in her. One that I uh, just uh, just read her being a little too rough down her top line, a little too rough right there behind her blade. She gets a little steeper out of her hip, and when we get them set in motion, she just doesn't quite ha uh, handle her back legs as well as her class winner does. Good class. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. First place went to Bailey Trujillo, and second place also went to Bailey Trujillo. Well, let's give these doe exhibitors a round of applause for coming out here and competing today. Really good set. I know we've got some different age groups out here, but I think they're uh, really good does in my mind. I think you ought to be proud of each one of these. Uh, there's two out here that just really hit me hard in terms of their built and their design, their skeletal makeup. We get them asked to be set in motion. They plant the feet and legs where they're supposed to. Uh, when they get them propped up, they're really dynamic from the side, and I think they both got plenty of muscularity and mass to them. Two really good ones. Let's give them one more round of applause and I'll go out and select your champion in reserve. Your champion breeding goat went to Creed Hughes, and your reserve champion breeding goat went to Aspen Hughes from Country Clovers.
Please bring your booster goat showers to the show ring. All your booster goat showers to the show ring. Well, let's give these booster kids a round of applause for a job well done. 
did an excellent job. Uh, like I said in the Sheep Booster show earlier, this is the up and coming of your program. We keep these kids hooked. Uh, y'all have a bright program ahead of ahead of y'all because there's a bunch of really good kiddos out here and doing an excellent job. I think there's one that kind of sorted their stuff up uh, ahead of the others right now. I wish I could give them all a first place uh, prize, but I can't. So there's one I'll go out and select for the champion. One more time, let's give all these kiddos and commend them for coming out here and competing. Please bring all your Class 1 meat goats to the show ring. All Class 1 meat goats to the show ring. Hello and welcome to the Eddie County Expo Goat Show. Today judging our market goats will be Chase McFall, county agent at Reagan County, Texas, and Big Lake. He raises fine wool, fine wool cross sheep, judges goats all over the place. He did the State Fair of Texas last year. Give him a big hand. We also have Tommy Yader, who's an extension agent from Howard County. He'll be judging showmanship from ringside, uh, and he, thank him for traveling over here as well.
A couple of notes. Uh, remember, guys, take all the pictures you want. Don't post them on social media until Thanksgiving. If you have an ear tag that ripped out or anything, be sure you bring it with you to the ring. Um, don't shake the judge's hand. Fist bumps are okay. And keep your distance from each other as best you can. And let's have a good show. Peyton Putman, we need you at the show ring.
Please bring all class two goats to the show ring. All class two goats to the show ring. Well, I apologize for taking a little bit more time in that class. It was really challenging from top to bottom. There's some good goats in here. Uh, came all different shapes and sizes. Uh, I think the goat that's going to go ahead and start the young lady's weather, uh, kind of red-legged, uh, red spot right there in his leg. And one, I think, from a basic built skeletal standpoint, just really dominates the class. He's kind of giving the young lady fits, but... Uh, if he'll get in there and stick, uh, I really like him in his center body. I like how he's built in the upper one-third of his body. He's really stout on his feet and legs. Uh, for a goat that's pretty immature, still down his top line, I think his days are, better days are ahead of him. But if he'll ever get to driving for him, I think there's a lot of quality and a lot of good in that goat. I'd probably like to smoothen him up right behind his blades right there if you're going to get critical on him. But one, I just thought he was so stout and massive and powerful. One is this class pretty handily. I kept flip-flopping these back and forth. Um, young man's weather here in twos. One that uh, 
Uh, you know, I really like how he handles down his top line, comes out with some rack shape. He really translates to a really good loin edge. Uh, when you get him set in motion, he's not the most attractive thing in the world, but he was good enough for me today to go ahead and start him in comparison to the young man's here in third. That I like a lot of things about him. I like his center rib cage. I like him how he's up in his chest in relation to his rear flank. I like how dead level he is out of his hip. I wish the goat would walk. I'm having a hard time reading him right there behind his shoulder at times. He's not wanting to cooperate for the young man. I think there's some good in that goat if he'd just cooperate. Um, he's probably not as shapely down his top as some of the others, but you just look at him from the side when he gets him propped up. He deserved to be in the top three just from his basic build. Goat coming out next, one that gives you that extra added length from forerib to rear flank, one that's really long down his spine. You get on the top side of his skeleton, he just runs out of too much gas for me today. Gets a little steeper out of his hip. One we get uh, gets a little rounder off both ends of his skeleton, like to see him go flex a little better. We've got some that are just too immature down their top line for me today. Let's give them a round of applause for a job well done. Results of class one. First, Clancy Conklin, Cottonwood 4-H. Second, Aiden Cox, Brush Popper 4-H, tag 83500. Third place, Austin Warden, Country Clovers. Fourth, Aiden Cox, Brush Popper 4-H, tag 83496. Fifth, Dylan Lopez, Zia Sharpshooters. Sixth, Peyton Putman, Country Clovers. Seven, Bailey Trujillo, Cottonwood 4-H, and eighth, Jack Jerva, Country Clovers.
Please bring all your class three meat goats to the show ring. All class three meat goats to the show ring. Well, another good class. Uh, young young man's doe kid up here at one. I just think balance is a little better for me. One that uh, has all the muscle uh, you need in one, but I think where she excels the class, she's a little smoother down her top line. She's a little better right behind her blade back there uh, as some of the others in class and still uh, has enough power and has enough shape to go ahead and, and start her. A uh, young man's uh, kind of black butted uh, goat up here in second. Uh, that's, that's the weather that's the stoutest in the class. He's really big footed, really big bone, really stout and square on all four corners and I appreciate that about him. You get him from his last rib back and you can't beat him. But where the problem is, is he just wants to break entirely too much right there behind his shoulder to be a class winner. If I could smoothen him up just a tick right there behind his blade and smoothen that top line, I think it really helps balance him out because he's awful stout and awful powerful, especially from that last rib back. Uh, the brown uh, rump goat over here, brown hip goat, one that is as elegant and as smooth and good looking as any in class, one that really wants to run uphill, wants to give you that uh, advantage from full rib to rear flank, really got a classy look about him. You get on the top side of him, especially from his last rib back, he just plays out extremely too much for me today in comparison to the one above. He really rounds off of his loin. He gives up too much power from behind in comparison to some of the others. But boy, I love the profile. I love the design. Goat coming out next. Got a really good build, really good design about him. You get on the top side of him and right behind his, rack, his shoulder right there in his rack. Just doesn't have enough pop and flair for me today. Got a goat coming out next. It's just a little plainer in her muscle pattern. A little steeper out of her hip for me. Really good class. Let's give him a round of applause for a job well done. Results of class two. First, Aiden Cox, Brush Popper 4-H. Second, Austin Warden, Country Clovers. Third, Kaylee Shockey, Cottonwood 4-H. Fourth, McKenna Cox, Brush Popper 4-H. Fifth, Bailey Trujillo, Cottonwood 4-H. Sixth, Gavin Wages, Loving 4-H. Seventh, Jeremiah West, Zia Sharpshooters and 8th, Alexander West, 
via sharpshooters.
Can we get all your first and second meat goats from class one and two? All your first and second meat goats from class one and two. I apologize about taking a little bit more time. It was really close between second and third. A uh, young man's uh, kind of blonde-headed goat wins the deal, and he does it pretty easily in my mind. One from a skeletal standpoint, I really like, really balanced, got a really cool look about him. Really love the design and makeup of this weather. One, that, to have that kind of look and design, he's really stout from the ground up. He's big bone. he's big-footed. Uh, he's got enough muscle. Is he the thickest in the class? Maybe not, but he's got plenty for me. Uh, when we get him set in motion, I'd like to kind of see him track out a little better out of his rear hawks. But one, 
just so good built, so good designed. I thought he won it pretty easily. It gets really close here. I used the uh, doe kid, young lady's doe kid here in second. I just thought this goat was a little leveler down at her top line, a little leveler out of her hip and rump area for me. One that just balanced up just a notch better. Really good top in her, a lot of shape, a lot of expression. I'd like to see her, what it made it so close for me, I'd like to see her handle her hind leg just a little better. She gets a little straighter at times back there for me, but one from the side, I really like the barrel, I really like her lines in her, I like how level she is at her top line, I like how level she is out of her hip. Weather here in third, one that I thought when we start got into the class, this could uh, be a, a, the, the, up, a, up a spot higher. Uh, I really like the muscularity this goat offers, one that's just chock full of muscle from front to rear. Really like to get in behind this goat. Really big set of pin bones in him, really wide from stifle to stifle. Uh, you know, at times it just doesn't balance up good enough for him. He gets a little rougher down his top line, a little higher in his spine when he's set in motion and, and on the stick. I think if we could settle that spine down, and, and, and I think that would really help balance him up. When we get him set in motion, got to see him a little neater there at the base of his shoulder, see him a little bit more elevated. But in terms of muscularity and power, he's as good as any as we have. Here's a goat coming out next. Got a really good show look about him, a lot of quality about him from the side. He gets a little shorter or steeper out of his hip when he's set in motion and on the stick. I got to raise that tail head out and stretch him up out of that hip a little bit more. He gets a little jammed up right there for me. Really good set. Let's give him a round of applause for a job well done.
Well, a really good lightweight division. Uh, it was some challenges in the class, some different types and kinds. Uh, uh, we get them back out here. I really like the lineup we have. I think uh, there's one out here for me today that's just built so good, and the skeleton on makeup really hits me hard as soon as uh, the exhibitor brings them in the ring. One that just dynamic from the side. Haven't quite looked at one like this all day in the goat barn. And you study him from the ground up. He's ultra big bone. He's big footed. He runs uphill. He's got plenty of shape. He might not be the thickest one out here, but he's got plenty enough for me. You get it from his last rib back. He hooks up right over that loin edge and out of his hip and rump. One that, you know, if you want to get ultra critical on him, we get him asked to set in motion. I wish he handled his hind leg. Just a little different, but that, that's getting awful picky. And then I'll go out and select your reserve. It gets a little closer for reserve. One more time, let's give these lightweight exhibitors a round of applause for a job well done. Well, it gets really close. I really like the lightweight goat. He kind of follows suit in terms of uh, the one that just won it in terms of his body, his built, his design, how his feet and legs plant. They're stout from the ground up, really good in his body and his chest floor in relation to rear flank. You get him from his last rib back, he's really good. His pin bones are up there where they're supposed to be. Uh, when, he's just not really wanting to drive for that young lady and right there behind his shoulders at times kind of bothers me. Um, but I see a lot of quality, I see a lot of good in there. There's two other goats over here that are good in their own right that probably have a little bit more product, probably have a little bit, uh, probably a little bit more ideal, I guess, uh, down their top line and, and in their condition. I don't quite see the bells and whistles in them as I do the, young, the lightweight one. Uh, so we'll go ahead and stick with your lightweight for reserve. Your champion Division One went to Braden Fuentes out of Class Three, and reserve went to Clancy Conklin out of Class One.
Please bring your class five meat goats to the show ring. Class five meat goats to the show ring. Hey, uh, this class is really good. A great pair up here. The best pair we've seen all day. Blonde-headed goat, young man's weather. Uh, you know, he kind of wins the deal when he walks in for me uh, in terms of his athletic ability, one that just really catches your, your attention, and you just love the bone work he has underneath him. And to be that stout from the ground up, he's still got a really cool look about him. He's still got some elevation up there. One, well, then when you get your hands on him, he doesn't disappoint at all either. Just super cool from that last rib back. Big old loin edge in him. Really get in behind him. Got a big old set of pin bones. Really wide from stifle to stifle. Just a stout, big-legged one that still got all the look and all the athletic appeal to him. Really like that one. Weather well, here in two, man, he has got a ditch down his back. He's probably as thick as anything we've seen all day. He's got a big old crease from running from his rack all the way to his tail head back there. He's really thick. He's really powerful. He's really wide from stifle to stifle. He doesn't quite balance up and have that athletic appeal like our class winner does. One that you like to see him a little neater up in the upper one third of his body. You like to see him a little neater there at the base of his shoulder. He too, when we get him set in motion, we'd like to see him handle those rear hawks just a notch better. But boy, you gotta appreciate the power and dimension he's got in him. A good looking weather right here in three. One that just gives you a really good look from the side. One that gives you some extension from fore rib to rear flank. One that his old hip sits in there really good. It's when you get on the top side of his skeleton, it just doesn't give you enough rack shape, enough mask and muscularity in comparison to the one above. The goat coming out next, a thick style one that just doesn't quite balance up. We got one that's really long and tall at the point of the shoulders coming out next. Just not stout enough from the ground up. Doesn't give us enough power from behind. Same stories with these two back here at the end. Let's give them a round of applause for a job well done. First place went to Braden Fuentes, Artesia FFA. Second went to Aubrey Putman, Country Clovers. Third went to Armando Herrera the Third, Loving 4-H. Fourth went to Reagan Van Seuss, Country Clovers. Fifth went to Gavin Wages, Loving 4-H, tag 83550. Sixth went to Aspen Cass, Brush Poppers 4-H. And seventh went to Gavin Wages, tag 83551.
Please bring your class six meat goats to the show ring. Your class six meat goats to the show ring. Well, really good class. Young ladies weather out here, just really stout from the ground up. One that's just ultra big footed, really big bone. One to be that stout, still really elevated in the upper one third of his body. Really good look from the side. You get him from behind him, he's really wide in his pins. He's really wide from stifle to stifle. Just a really good balance, really thick, powerful goat. Goat there in two is one that's uh, made pretty similar in terms of his bone work and stoutness for this class. One that I just don't think he has enough to him compared to the one that wins. Maybe not as balanced, maybe not as unique in the upper one-third of his body, but one that's good in his own right as well. Go here in threes, one that um, gives you a good look from the side. One that uh, just runs out of gas when you step in from behind him. Uh, just not as powerful, not as shapely, not as thick as the two above. A goat coming in next. I really like the shape and expression of this goat. Ultra, ultra shapely. Uh, a lot of side view, uh, butt shape, I like that about him. He gets in in his hocks too much for me, he's not as athletic on the move. We've got some goats down the line, the next goat coming out, just not shapely enough down his top line, gets a little too PC down his top line for me. We've got some goats down here that get a little too easy down their top, don't have the shape and expression uh, quite like some of the others do in class. Let's give them a round of applause, thank you. First place went to Gracie Rand, Artesia FFA. Second place went to Aspen Hughes, Country Clovers. Third went to Armando Herrera the Third, Loving 4-H. Fourth went to Kelly Jerva, Country Clovers. Fifth went to Swayze Fulmar, Cottonwood 4-H. Sixth went to Gavin Wages, Loving 4-H. And seventh went to Jeremiah West, Zia Sharpshooters.
can we get your first and second place meet goats from class four and five? Your first and second meet goats from class four and five. Well, a really close pair, uh, really challenging in my mind. Uh, it, it's really close. I, I think the young ladies, whether here in one, I, I think I read uh, this goat just being a little sounder off his feet and legs, a little more balanced, a little leveler down his top line. He comes out of those blades a little smoother for me. He transitions down his top and not smoother. He transitions out of his hip a little better. Is he as classy and is he as dynamic in the upper one-third of his body as the young man's there in second? No, if he was, it'd be a little easier for me, but he just, I think he's just a little more correct in his skeletal build and design than the young man there in second. Young man there in second, one that's really good body up in his chest in relation to his rear flank, gives you a really good look at times. I think it's when we get him set in motion, he really, confused, he just wants to get outside of his skeleton a little too much for me. Uh, one that it, we got to fix that back rear uh, hot placement. It really agitates me when we get him set in motion. He too, we could just balance him up out of his top line and right there behind his shoulder. A paint goat or a red shoulder goat there in third one that's just really dynamic in the upper one third of her body. Really smooth there at the base of her shoulder. Really classy look to her. You get him behind, just runs out of too much gas, too much power for me today. We got one that's coming out next that's ultra thick, ultra powerful. Just gets a little too easy behind her shoulders for me today. We got to let, just smoothen her up right, or smoothing him up right there behind his shoulder to move him up any higher. We get some that are a little plainer in their makeup, don't have the shape and expression. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you.
Please bring all your Class 7 meat goats to the show ring. All Class 7 meat goats to the show ring. Well, what a really good division. Uh, six really outstanding goats here. Uh, you could have gone some different directions if you wanted to in that top end. Uh, uh, really competitive classes, uh, really competitive division. Uh, there's one out here, uh, I think, that just really hits me hard and wins this deal and does it really, really handily in my mind. Uh, to be that athletic and catch my attention uh, every time they, uh, this goat comes in the ring, He's stout from the ground up, uh, one that just to be that style gives you that kind of dynamic look. They're hard to find, one that just hits me really hard from a skeletal build, a design, got all the muscle you can want in one, just a really, really good high-quality goat. I like him a lot. I'll go out and select your champion, and we'll come back and talk about reserve. Second place in that class, uh, man, this, this goat is ditched up. This thing is massive down his back. He's as massive and as powerful as anything we've seen today. He's wide from stifle to stifle. He shows you all that shape and expression uh, from where I'm at. You know, if you could put a, a different set of hind legs on him, it's not even close. But it bothers me enough to where it brings these other ones in contention, you know, our middleweight. One that's got a really athletic look about him, wants to run uphill. He's got big old feet and legs on him. He prances around, get enough in the ring for me. Uh, he's not the thickest out here, but I think he's got enough. He's a really good one as well. When we get in our heavyweight one, just a real fault-free one. One that it touches as good as anything we've had out here. One that's got some shape and expression. He might not be as fancy in the upper one-third of his body as some that we have. He might not be as athletic, but man, he's just a really good fault-free goat that... Uh, there's not a whole lot of rocks you can throw at him. So there's, that's kind of how I see him. It's very challenging, and I'll go ahead and select your reserve. One more time, let's give these kiddos a round of applause. Your Division 2 champion went to Braden Fuentes, Class 4, and Reserve Division 2 champion went to Gracie Rand, Class 5.
Please bring your class eight meat goats to the show ring. Class eight meat goats to the show ring. Well, another really good class, really good pair up here. Uh, two really dynamic looking goats, one, uh, goats that are built really good. I really like the design and makeup of them. I just think there's a notch more to this young man's goat up here in one. He's got a notch more rib cage to him, He's got a notch more width and dimension, especially from his last rib back. One that's uh, really got a lot of shape in terms of the outer portions of his leg. Uh, really good look from the side. I think he wins it. He does it pretty handily. At times, I'd like to just get in behind him and see him track a little truer and wider out of his rear hocks if you're getting a little picky. That's being all, that's throwing a, a rock at a really good one there. Uh, goat here too is uh, super elevated. Really good show look from the side. We got to open him up in his center body to be able to compete with the class winner. He just doesn't have enough top side shape and width and dimension as our class winner as well. A goat here in three, he's got a big old top in him, big old back in him, a uh, big old rump in him. He's not as balanced, he's not as eye appeal and as attractive in the upper one third of his body as the two above. He too, when we get him set in motion, I'd like to see him go a little more athletic and cheer off his root, rear two. Uh, the, the, the paint goat or the, the spotted goat, spotted rump goat back here, one that's stout from the ground up, just plays out too much down, at, down her top line, doesn't have the shape and expression as some of the others do in class. One next coming out gets, gets a little too easy down its top line, doesn't have the shape and tone and description. Same story as the ones uh, behind. Let's give them a round of applause for a job well done. First place went to Kaylin Klein, Artesia FFA, Second went to Braden Fuentes, Artesia FFA. Third went to Madeline Clark, Carlsbad FFA. Fourth went to Summer Crook, Artesia FFA. Fifth went to Stella Rand, Cottonwood 4-H. Seventh went to Alexander West, Zia Sharpshooters. And six was Swayze Fulmar from Cottonwood 4-H.
Please bring all your class nine meat goats to the show ring. Class nine meat goats to the show ring. Well, a really good class, really challenging. Um, you know, I, I don't know if there was one or two that just really hit me real hard right off the bat. And I think there's some different things of each one I'd like to take and change uh, to make the really good one. But I thought the young ladies, whether right here in terms of handle quality, true shape, true expression, one, you get on the top side of his skeletons as shapely and as powerful as any we have in class, one that's really creasy down his top, really expressive from stifle to stifle. One that, you know, he might not be as neat in the upper one-third of his body, might not be as athletic as some we've used today. We set in motion, but boy, he's chock full of muscle. He's really thick. Uh, I really like that about him. Young man's weather here, too. He's really neat uh, from his uh, last rib forward. He's as good as we have in class. He's really good in his body cavity. He's up in his chest floor in relation to his rear flank. He's really level coming down his top line. It's when you step in behind him, uh, he just runs out of too much gas. We've got to see him a little bigger in upper portions of his hip and his pin bones. He runs out of too much gas from, beside, from behind. But boy, from his last rib forward, he's as good as we have in class. A goat here in three is one that I thought when they first came in, this one could compete for the class. He's really stout. He's really big-legged. One that he just wants to play out down his top line a little too much for me. He rolls extremely too much in his loin edge. He gets a little PC down his top at times. We get him set in motion. He's not as athletic as some. I love the structure underneath on him. Really stout. Good goat there. Third, uh, paint goat here in fourth. One that gives you that uh, length of body from forward rib to rear flank. One that's got some shape up high. When you get from his last rib back, he gets a little too PC. He gets a little too in in his hocks when we get him set in motion. You need to see him a little bit more elevated. Uh, paint goat coming out next. We just got to give a shot more muscularity, especially coming out of that rack. A goat here next, one that just gets a little too flat in his center rib. Got to open him up just a notch, see him a little bit more powerful. Goat here at the end, really rugged goat. We just got into too many structure problems off that hip and hind leg. Gets a little too PC down his top. Let's give him a round of applause for a job well done. Thank you. First place went to Madison Mancha, Cottonwood 4-H. Second went to Creed Hughes, Country Clovers. Third went to Clancy, Clancy Conklin, Cottonwood 4-H. Fourth went to Armando Herrera the Third, Loving 4-H. Fifth went to Bailey Trujillo, Cottonwood 4-H. Sixth went to Chloe Jefferson, Blue Jeans and Boots. And seventh went to Tyson Sullivan, Carlsbad FFA.
Please bring your first and second place meat goats of class seven and eight to the show ring. Please bring your class, your first and second place meat goats of class seven and eight to the show ring. Well, as we progress in the heavyweight class, we're getting up there in weight and size, and I think the young lady's weather right here is the most youthful in his appearance, one that's still athletic and upper one-third of his body, still uh, really good when we get him set in motion, probably the most eye-appealing and the most youthful up there, in my opinion. And when you get your hands on him, he's probably the trimmest, uh, the most ideal in his, his overall condition and handle. You get in behind him. Probably for his size, you'd maybe just like to bust him open from behind a little bit. But one from the side, he gives you a really, really good look, really good athletic look when we get him set in motion. Uh, the uh, goat here in seconds, one that's really shapely down his top line, really creasy down his top line. I appreciate that about him. Really love where he is in terms of his handle. Uh, really good job getting him there today for as big as we're getting him. One for me today just doesn't balance up quite as good when we get him set in motion gets a little plainer and probably a past the, his, his end point in terms of his, his look and the upper one-third of his body, but one in terms of touch, shape, I really like. Here's a big stout one coming out next, one that's probably a little past his prime, in my opinion, one that uh, I think probably one point in his life was probably really good. Uh, I just think he gets a little bit more mature and common up there in the upper one-third of his body. He's not as toned, not as descript as some of the others behind uh, one that we might want to get him to go out and flex a little better, see him a little better off his rear too. A goat coming out next is real terminal, real shapely, uh, just gets too round off of both ends of his skeleton, not good enough from behind on his rear hocks for me today. One that's coming out next just gets a little too piecey down that top line, got to see some more shape and expression. Same story down here, there's just not enough shape, there's not enough product to compete with the ones above. Thank you.
well as we progress up here in our heavyweight division. I uh, really commend you exhibitors and, and families to uh, still holding these things together as we get up there in weight and size and maturity. Uh, they're still youthful in their appearance out here. They still have some tone. They still have some description. And, and that's why they're out here. There's two out here that uh, probably hit me just a little harder than most in terms of their build, their makeup. When they plant their feet and legs, they're a little stouter from the ground up. They've got the right kind of shape and expression. They've got the right kind of pin set that I'm looking for. Uh, one more time, the heavyweight division. Let's give these kiddos a round of applause for a job well done. Your champion three division went to Kaylin Klein out of class seven, and your reserve champion division three went to Braden Fuentes out of class seven. We'd like to thank our sponsors for your Grand and Reserve Champion Meat Goat Buckle. Your Grand Champion Meat Goat Buckle was sponsored by the Neat Case family. And your Reserve was, was sponsored by Karen and Kai Scott. So please give them a big round of applause.
Your Division I champion was Brayden Fuentes. Your champion Division II was also Brayden Fuentes. And your Division Three champion was Kaylin Klein. Your reserve champion Division I was Clancy Conklin. Division II reserve champion was Gracie Brand. And your Division Three reserve champion was Brayden Fuentes. Let's give the judge and all the help and these kids a big round of applause, please. Okay, let's give these kiddos a round of applause for made it back out here in the Grand Drive. Super, super set of goats. Uh, there's some goats back there that are probably disappointed and rightfully so. Uh, really uh, competitive goat show today. Um, a different judge, a different day. You might have some different ones out here, and that's fine. I get it. This is just the way I saw it today. Um, just a super set of kiddos out here. It was a blast to work with them all day. Uh, kind of like I said this morning on the sheep deal, uh, this is my second year here and it's been a blast. The hospitality, the people that you get to work with here are second to none. Uh, the people that are putting on the show, y'all have done an amazing job the past two years uh, uh, for these kiddos. I commend you and, and to get this show put on today, uh, I'm sure it was a, a challenge. So I, I really commend y'all. I hope the exhibitors appreciate what y'all have done for them and getting them to this point. Um, parents, grandparents, ag teachers, county agents, y'all have done an excellent job of raising these kids. Um, so I just appreciate y'all putting up with me for two years. I've traveled all over to do county fairs and, and, and jackpots and, and, and state fairs and major shows. And I tell you what, um, um, th these, these kids and these animals and here in Eddy County are as competitive as anywhere you'll find in the country. Uh, just a fun, fun set to, to get to come evaluate, a fun set of kiddos to get to come work with. Um, I just appreciate the two years y'all have had me. I appreciate my ring help. He kind of follows me around New Mexico. I do two or three of these a year, and he's always here with me uh, uh, just to keep these kids in line, and he really does a good job working with them. All the other ring help back here, uh, Tommy doing the, the, uh, the showmanship. So I appreciate everybody. We'll talk about the goats now. Uh, we get our lightweights, and uh, it's been a while since we've been uh, on these, that drive, so I'll talk about them. I just thought the one that won it was just so athletic for that division. Really caught my attention when, when, uh, when this goat came in. Just super balanced, super attractive, super stout from the ground up and has enough muscle. Is he the thickest one in the barn? No, he's not, but I think he's got enough. Here's a little green goat that uh, has got the same type of built and design. Really good rib, uh, really good body goat, one that's really level out of his hip. Uh, at times when he doesn't want to drive, he just gets a little easy down his top line, but he was just so good looking, so good built, I thought he needed to be in reserve. We got in the middleweight division, the one that wins it, uh, 
he, he's my kind. He's a beast. He just, man, when he gets in, he just hits you hard. Uh, to be that stout, that massive, uh, moves around the ring. He's really wide on all fours. The one that comes at you wide, goes away wide. He's big down his back. He's stout from the ground up. But he does all that in a really good eye appealing package. I think he, he, he's a combination goat that we've seen today to have that power, that stoutness. He's still got a wild look about him. Really good look, a balance and, and design to him. I like him a whole lot. The goat there in reserve was one that's just super elevated, really neat to look at, really follows the type and kind in terms of feet and legs, that athletic ability when we get in set in motion. Just didn't quite have the much to him today uh, as the one that wins it. Then we got in our heavyweight division, uh, one that uh, the winner here, just really thick, really shapely for that big of a goat. Still holds itself together really good in motion. Still holds itself really good in the upper one-third of his body. If you want to change and go throw a rock at him, you'd probably like to see him track a little wider from behind if you want to get critical on him for a big goat like that. But one that just balances up so good with all the muscle mass he has. The one that was reserving there, really good eye peel and go. Really like the design and makeup. One that wants to go up and out. Really like the design of him. He just didn't have enough to him especially in the center portion of his body, is the one that win, wins it. That's how I see him today. Once again, it's been an honor and privilege to get to come evaluate your, your lamb and goats today. It's been an honor and privilege to get to come work with the kiddos. Thank you all for having me. Your champion meat goat went to Braden Fuentes, Division 2, and your reserve meat goat went to Kaylin Klein, Division 3.